What is going on, my fellow geeks? Three movies with elves and a guy with a white beard. Not a lot of people accept it as canon. 2022 will be the year of Star Wars. Well, I have more than just one piece of geek news. I have been Isaac Hunter. Which is like high culture, but better. What's up, fellow geeks? And welcome back to Raving Geeks, the weekly pop culture podcast where we talk all things geeky and geek culture, which is like high culture, but better. My name is Hope Goodrell, host of the Raving Geeks podcast, along with my co-host who will introduce himself in a minute with our question of the week. If you're joining us for the first time and you like this episode, you can check out our other episodes at cm-life.com and any other place you listen to podcasts like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Just search Central Michigan Life Podcasts, Raving Geeks. Um, So we had a mini hiatus, not planned. But, you know, end of semester and all the things that come with it are fantastic. Mm-hmm. And we love end of semester, said no one ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we do have our question of the week, which is, if you could live in any fictional universe, what would it be and why? Mm. My choice is my background animal crossing because all you do is just you farm you take care of your animal residents and you pay taxes that's it it's like the most nonchalant place to live and it's the closest to regular life but a little bit fantastical because you're living up with a bunch of animals uh how about you hope um i am going to be my traditional self we um and i'm gonna say the magical universe of harry potter But specifically, I would honestly love to live in Newt's briefcase, Mm. Newt Scamander's briefcase, just because I want to play with the baby Nifflers and then get to see all the different fantastical beasts that he has. That place is such a vibe. (laughs) Like, I want to be his helper. What's her? I don't remember what her name is, but the one, but I swear, I think she's a muggle, but she's like, yeah, I know how to take care of these beasts. Yeah. And he's she's, he's just cool with it. So I, I would love to be that helper for Newt's commander. Yeah. Don't put me in by any basilisks and we'll be fine. <laughs> All right. So bear with us. But we got some geek news for y'all. Mm-hmm. Carter, what have you got for us? Uh, I don't have as much news as you, but still for them pretty important news. Uh, the Futurama revival is going to prefu- is going to premiere on Hulu this summer. No specific date has been added yet. Uh, both RoboCop and Legally Blonde are getting new TV series and movies at the works in Amazon. I don't personally think that those two franchises needed that, but okay. Um, the Star Wars movies will now be opening with an open crawl from now on, so you don't have to worry about any of the spinoff Star Wars films without an opening crawl. I know that was a huge problem for some people, so that's good to have that resolved. Uh, the creature com- uh, DC's Creature Commandos cast got released which is frank rillo as frick flag senior uh indira varma as the bride M- maria balkova as alana rose rostevic sorry these names are really unique and hard to pronounce <laughs> uh zoe chow is uh nina marnariski david harbour is playing frankenstein which i think is very cool uh she uh sean gunn is playing gi robot and weasel again and Al Tunic is Dr. Phosphorus, which is very exciting. He's a really great Batman villain, uh, specifically from Batman Beyond. So it's nice to see him brought into like the main Batman continuity. Uh, Superman Legacy has started early pre-production. So the script is finished and now they are looking for their new Superman. I look forward to that casting. Uh, Galaxy Quest is also in getting a TV series at Paramount. And the Extraction 2 movie will feature a 14 long one take, uh, a 14 minute one take action scene. Sorry, words. Uh, so that's one of the longest one take action scenes ever put on film. So that's going to be really exciting to see. And Will Poulter, who plays, uh, who he's known for We Are the Millers and The Maze Runner and now Guardians of the Galaxy 3 since he's playing Adam Warlock. And Clark Gregg, who plays Phil Coulson in the Marvel TV stuff, will be coming to Motor City Comic Con. So get your tickets now before they sell out. Uh, and that's... they're going to. Will Poulter is there. I'm yeah, just saying. They, they will. I need to. <laughs> I need to order mine this weekend. Uh, what's your hope news? 
All right. Um. So you only took one of mine. So that's interesting. Um. But so we've got some casting con- confirmations for Deadpool three. Marina Bakarin and Stefan Kapikik. I have no idea. There are too many I C I C at the end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> will reprise their roles as Vanessa and Colossus. And then Brianna Hildenbrand is also expected to reprise her role as Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Um, Star Wars The Bad Batch is going to end with its third season in 2024, but the exact release window has yet to be revealed. Um, Casting news for uh, Lilo and Stitch, the uh, live action, Billy Magnuson, um, he has been in a few different um things. Um he was in the newest version of Into the Woods as the other the blonde Prince Charming, not P- Chris Prine. Um and a couple other things. Um we don't know who he's playing yet, we just know that he's cast. Mm-hmm. Um Sydney Agu Dong is playing um nani lilo's sister um and there is some controversy with her just because she is lighter skinned native Mm -hmm. um but the controversy isn't necessarily like the controversy is more like we understand that there are lighter skinned people and being lighter skin is not um indicative of how native you are but the problem is hollywood and disney casting lighter skinned people when in the original animated movie they were much darker and so there's this feeling of whitewashing um we've got so we had casting for um david who is nani's boyfriend or becomes his boyfriend her boyfriend um but then he got recast and the reason he got recast is because um fans basically started digging through to learn about him and found that on his um I think they said it was his Spotify. There were oh, a lot of racial slurs. Huh? What is his Twitter? Maybe. Um they let's see. Yeah, it was a Spotify account which mentions racial slurs. Um, how? So, how? I, like, I don't of all things Spotify is the one they caught him on yeah I just um yeah so uh Kaiyo Ka- Machado was originally going to be playing David but he has been replaced by Capo Dudoy mm-hmm. um so I mean at least Disney is kind of going, okay, we understand some things, but, you know, we don't fully understand whitewashing. Um, but, you know, like I said, at least they're trying with some things. Um, we have got news on in the world of Broadway. Uh, Phantom of the Opera has officially run its last show on Broadway. It closed um last week sunday on the it was the um 16th of april that it was their last show and andrew lloyd weber was actually there and he dedicated the last performance in honor of his son who recently passed away um because his son was like a huge fan of the musical and music of phantom um, it was a 35 year run on Broadway and almost 14,000 shows on Broadway, which made it the longest running ever, uh, or not ever, but um, recently. Um, and now, because Phantom no longer is running, Chicago the musical is now the longest running Broadway musical. Um, at only, they're under like half, they're less than half of what i think they're close to seven thousand shows wow um, that's 
really impressive. Yeah, so Phantom, Phantom has its legacy. It is not going anywhere. Um, Marvel slash Disney Plus has announced that they are adding the American Sign Language viewing options for Ant Man on Disney Plus, which I think is really cool. Um, so basically, you can access the feature on Disney Plus under the Extras tab on the Ant Man page. Um, and it was actually, there was an actual ASL performer, Jack Cook. Um, and he, so basically they say that they exceeded expectations as they set out to communicate Ant-Man's entertaining dialogue and sound effects in a manner befitting Marvel's distinctive style, subversive humor, and high-velocity action. Um, Douglas Ridolph worked on both Eternals and Hawkeye, and um, which both included Makari and then Echo, and Echo is still set to receive her, um, her own role or her own TV show. Um, we've got news on the as Carter's background is um. Animal Crossing. Speaking of um, video games, we've got Idris Elba is reprising his role as Knuckles in a uh, TV show that'll be just about Knuckles. Adam Pally will reprise his role as Wade Whipple. And Tika Sumter is also set to guest star reprising her role as Maddie Wachowski. Um, other cast members and new arrivals include um, Edie Patterson, Scott Mescudi, Julian Barrett, Ellie Taylor, and guest star Rory, Rory McCann. Um, so if you're a fan of Knuckles, and um, so chronologically, the events of Knuckles w- will be set between Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and the upcoming third film, which is set for release on December 20th, 2024. Um, Also in the world of games, Pokemon confirms new Pokemon in upcoming DLC. The unnamed Pokemon first appeared in a new anime over the weekend, which I think was a couple weekends ago. But, so if you're into that, um, Godzilla... versus Kong has a new title for the sequel it is Godzilla and then it has an X in between it and then Kong the new empire mm-hmm. Disney Plus disappointed me because they canceled National Treasure Edge of History uh, which was the TV show it was really good I am not happy with them um, Carrie Fisher is set to get a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame and the ceremony is, of course, on May the 4th. Because what what other time would you have it? Right. Um, so Neil Gaiman has come out and said that the Sandman season two is not being called season two. They hmm. haven't come up with its new name yet. But just so you know, it's not called season two. Um, scripts are written and they are casting the first episode. And sets are being designed, so be on the lookout for all of that. Um, and then a couple more things. So one, Jamie Fox was recently hospitalized. Um, they haven't come out and said what yet. His family is asking for privacy on that, which is understandable. Um, mm-hmm. but doctors say that he is steadily improving. They're still running tests to try and figure out what happened. Um, but he is getting better. And then I realize these are football things, but, um, back in January, the whole world saw DeMar Hamlin literally die on the field. He has officially been cleared by three cardiologists to play in the NFL again. And he is planning, um, to play in the NFL still. So I personally think that he needs to like slowly reenter. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I don't know how Comatio Cordis 
the effects other than just, you know, if you get hit at the right time in the chest during a certain cardiac rhythm, you die. Um, but I'm excited for him. Um, and then in CMU news, Dallas Dixon has, um, he is making, he has made the wide receiver list in the beast for the 2023 NFL draft guide in the athletic. And so I think that's really cool. And I hope that means that he gets, um, you know, his name called or at least some sort of extra recognition during the NFL draft, which is coming up this coming weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, we're really proud of him and all of our boys at CMU and we wish them the best of luck with this upcoming draft this weekend. So that's all the news we've got for today. Um, but now on to our geek topic. Mm-hmm. So our question of the week and our backgrounds, I'm in hogs of mead today. If anybody is not watching and you don't get to experience our lovely Zoom backgrounds. Um, but we decided that we wanted to talk about like what fictional universes we would go to um, for like vacation time and mm-hmm. then we also split it up a little bit farther to think of more like spring break and uh winter break or some people still call it christmas break because that's what it is um you know where they're kind of shorter you only get like a week to two weeks to enjoy time off and then you've got summer break which you can do something for a longer time um and so we decided which fictional universes we would go to um so carter where is if you could transport yourself into any fictional universe for spring break where would you go what is one place you would go uh for spring break i'd love to go to kashik from the star wars universe the wookiees seem like they have a fun beach to be active on and there's a lot to do there lots of hiking i've always loved going hiking with my family so it seems like kashik is like one of the perfect places to, finish, to look at the big forest tree that they have in the middle of their planet. And it's a great sight from what I've seen in uh, Jedi Fallen Order while playing through it. Um, Kashyyyk just seems like a lot of fun to go hang out with some Wookiees on some beach time. Uh, Hope, how about you? Um, I said Ketterdam because I also could not think of a lot of places. <laughs> All the, like I was like, what fictional universes do I know that are not fully you know our world and my brain would turn off um but no I said Ketterdam because it's kind of Las Vegas-y and like you can go gambling you can see different shows you can you know there's a lot to do um and it would be fun as long as you're being smart and safe um but also it's probably cheaper than Las Mm -hmm. Vegas if we're being honest um especially if you go into some of the more uh Peavy places in the barrel in Ketterdam. So, um, but yeah, I said Ketterdam because I feel like Las Vegas style for spring break would be a lot of fun to do. Mm-hmm. So, nice. what about for summer break? If you could go somewhere for a long time, where would you go? Somewhere for summer break. Ooh. Um... I don't know. Um, I'd probably end up going to New York, but not just any New York. Probably New York and the Marvel Universe. I think that would be a whole lot of fun. Pack light because it'd be hella dangerous. I know my hotel room wouldn't survive 24 hours because, you know, the Avengers are doing Avengers stuff. So yeah. i definitely pack light and just, like, travel the city, probably meet up with as many superheroes as possible. And assuming that Stanley is still alive in that universe, obviously have him cameo in my in my own summer vacation i think that would be really really funny um but yeah new york but marvel new york sounds like a lot of fun just like as a summer break because new york is already expansive enough in the history there but with the added history of superhero elements and just going to like that captain america museum and like learning all about his timeline and his time in the war would be excellent obviously going on a tour to stark tower would be amazing uh seeing pim labs there's just a lot of stuff to do in and superhero new york and i'm sure even though marvel has not said it i am sure the swarma place 
once they realized who was sitting and eating after the Battle of New York. They are now, you know, capitalizing on the fact that the Avengers were eating shawarma in their oh, restaurant. Oh, absolutely. They had that place totally gated off, probably, saying oh, that yeah. this is where the Avengers sat after they <laughs> defeated Loki. Um, I, so, I said I would love to go into the magical world of Harry Potter. I personally would love to go to Hogsmeade because I feel like there is a lot to do, but also, um, like, it's just one of the places you could go. If they had any Quidditch matches, I would definitely go see a Quidditch match. Um, but I also feel like, you know, Hogwarts and, uh... Diagon Alley and hell, even I would dare my best friend to go with me into Nocturne Alley, but you know. Um, but, you know, I also kind of want to go into uh, the Dark Forest at Hogwarts because there are possibly unicorns, but also other magical creatures. And then I kind of want to talk to the giant squid that lives in the lake at Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. I feel like he is very lonely. And would just want someone to talk to. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I feel I feel like I could live in Harry Potter world. As long as there were no dark wizards. Trying to take over the entire world again. Um, Grindelwald and Voldemort. I am looking specifically at you. <laughs> but yeah. I, I absolutely would love to go. And explore. Any part of. The United Kingdom. That is the magical world of Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. that sounds like a lot of fun that sounds like a fun vacation <laughs> it would be so much fun and mm-hmm. then listen if I got to have a Niffler at any point on the trip I would be so happy <sighs> Nifflers for whatever reason are like my favorite little creatures they're just adorable mm-hmm. Um, but like also the fact that they can squeeze in between everything and then they can have a giant pouch full of like shiny things but like that doesn't make them bigger it just is magic so yeah all right oh you know there's a creature that i love i forget the name of it but it's like the owl looking horses that like eat the little floating bug i forget what they're called but i love those creatures um they were like ah i forget what hold on i'm gonna look this up because (laughs) ow hold on i know what they're called i just forget the name of them no, not a Patronus, you Google. You're not talking the demiguys, right? Uh, what is that's there? not a horse, but like the hippocampus? No, not a demiguy. It's not the a moon calf. No. Oh my God! Hold on, I need to look up <laughs> Fantastic Beasts. Us. I mean, because also baby moon calves are freaking adorable. And also, uh, I mean, I feel it, like... They might they... be called moon calves. Hold on. <laughs> they have giant eyes. and they're... Yes, those! I love those things! Yes. <laughs> I love those things. When he, like, puts the little bugs in the air and they start, like, nipping at it. Oh, my God. I would love to pet one of those. Those might be my favorite creatures besides the Niffler and then the Patronuses. I also like bow truckles, but I feel like it's more I just like pick it because I feel like a lot of other bow truckles are just like snobby little assholes. Yeah, the way they pushed him out of the group, I was like, ah, bow truckles are all assholes. I'll take a Groot any any day. Yep, pretty much. All right. Going back to spring break, where would you like to go? actually speaking of Groot that's a perfect segue I love to go see nowhere in Marvel I love to go inside of a giant celestial's head eat weird alien food and meet a whole bunch of weird alien creatures I think that would be really fun um I know like canonically the collector's museum isn't actually still technically there but let's say I go to 2014 nowhere and like see his collection of just exotic beasts that would be super cool um just seeing how the mining facility works when they're mining all the membranes from the 
dead celestial i think would be really interesting and also kind of gross and you just meet so many colorful characters there like walking around nowhere in the guardians of the galaxy video game was one of my favorite parts there are so many like nooks and crannies with so many easter eggs to it and they just really went in depth with that place and that's the reason why i always go back to that game just to explore nowhere um Nowhere confuses me mainly because it does not, at least in the movie, because this is my only frame of reference for it. It does not have like, like how Earth we have, I can't remember what it's called, but essentially we have the thing that keeps the oxygen in. Like we have the oh, atmosphere. Yeah, that's because they have um, man made ox oxygen generators of rocket explained in the first. And like, I understand that, but there's nothing keeping it in. So, like, like there's nothing that traps it and keeps it in. So, therefore, there's right. nothing that keeps, like, the other stuff, it from just, like, other stuff from coming in, too. Yeah, so, but like, it, the just, nowhere is so large is that it created a gravitational pull, and that's why yeah. it also has, like, three moons. So, it is technically a planet because it, it created a gravitational pull. But it just needed oxygen. So it's technically possible by today's sciences, but um that's going into like territory that I don't know. So <laughs> I'm just offering the explanation that they give in the movie. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I might have missed that part. Cause I don't remember that at all. <laughs> yeah. Um so this one I decided on Neverland for a spring Ooh. break yeah because i feel like there is a few different like activities you could do so like you could go um to the jolly roger and hang out with the pirates for a while um you could go and to tree hollow for the uh fairies like tinkerbell and like see how that all works mm -hmm. um but then you also can, like, get your downtime to just, like, hike and explore on your own. And, like, so it's not super jam-packed, but it's also, like, there's only so many activities you can do before it might get boring. So having it in a shorter break, like spring break, would mm -hmm. make it really nice. Because even if you yeah. did it multiple times for spring break, like... It'll change slightly because you've changed, but like, I don't know. It just seems like one of those good short breaks that you could go back to. Also, you you could also theor theoretically just go there, like not to age for a little bit. You everyone's like you can't. You came back looking so much younger. Where did you go? I went to Neverland. Oh, you, you mean the place that you physically can't age? That makes sense. Yep, pretty much. I mean. Our I don't know. I don't remember since I haven't watched Chuck in a while, but are adults even allowed in Neverland? I don't I remember. I mean, technically, you've got um, the tribe's adults, mm -hmm. um, and then all of the pirates, I believe, are adults as well. Right. Yeah. So that always kind of confused me. Like, how did, did Captain Hook just go there at a certain age and then stop aging? So that, so. <laughs> It's kind of sort of explained, but also not really because it's not Jim Barry's explanation. Right. Um, but in Peter and the Star Catchers, mm -hmm. it's the actual like pixie dust, stardust. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That like makes it so you can't age. And so like um like Captain Hook is the one trying to steal this giant crate of stardust. And then Peter happens to like get put into a bunch of it and so now he doesn't age he can fly he you know um and then you've also got wendy and i think there's another adult because there's this whole organization that like tries to find the stardust and collect it before mm -hmm. the smugglers and everything but i haven't read it in a while so some of the details are escaping me but i highly yeah it Peter and the Star Catchers explains it just a little bit better than Jim Barry does, but also Barry was writing it for other reasons. So, like, he just wanted the child aspect and being children and the innocence of children. So, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
So what is another summer break that you would love to go to? Well, I'd love to go to the Mushroom Kingdom. I think that would be a lot of fun. And just mostly because it's such an interesting world to explore. Mostly, I would like to visit Delfino Island from um, Mario Sunshine because that's just a really nice beachy area. You go in, you get some sun, you swim in the water. Uh, they have a water park. Um, so there's lots to do, lots of hiking areas. You just got to watch out for like the piranha plants and other bowser enemies that may come across your path um but yeah the mario world is so diverse and interesting it's a very cool parallel of how ours works just more fantastical so like you could go to cheap cheap beach or you could go to the rocky mountains or you could even go to bowser's kingdom if you wanted to but i wouldn't suggest it uh (laughs) mushroom kingdom is obviously full of life and fields that you can wander through it's just a very interesting world to go and explore and i think it would be a lot of fun and plus you get free superpowers so who would ever turn that down yeah uh, what about you hope um for summer break i would go to narnia mm. but but sense. specifically like after the white witch is dead i would maybe go when the talmarines you know are trying to kill caspian because i don't know i feel like maybe i could help out i don't know probably not i'd probably die in that battle yeah Um, (laughs) but then also like i would love to go on the voyage of the dawn treader um and like go exploring different locations in narnia and the world um And also still getting to view magic and then laugh at Eustace for being a dumbass, for stealing Mm -hmm. the gold from the dragon's hoard. Like, you can't just pick up gold in a magical place. Right. (laughs) how that works. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. But, like, Narnia. Because I feel like, like, you, one, well, okay, like, there's a downside to it as well because I could go go to Narnia, but then I'd come back and it'd be the same exact time it was when I left. So if that magic rule didn't apply, if like time was continuous and I went for like a month and it was a month back in the real world too, yeah, um, I would be totally fine with that because I think it would be super fun. But if I ended up back at the same time, I would not be okay with it because I would be like, what the hell. It's been like two months here and now I have to relive these two months even though like I understand Peter's frustration and mm-hmm. uh, the uh, Prince Caspi in the fourth book mm-hmm. like I, I totally understand his frustration of growing old and then becoming a child again. Mm-hmm. That makes a whole lot of sense. Okay so I have to ask are there any locations that you couldn't decide if you wanted to go for just spring break or just summer break. Um, honestly, Dairy Maine. I know it's kind of fucked up to go there, but like being a horror aficionado, I'm okay with it. Uh, I know how to kill Pennywise if uh, I ever come across him. You know, just don't be afraid. It's super easy. I'll just bully him like in the movie. Ah, you suck, stupid clown. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Uh, but Dairy Mean is also like in the Stephen King universe since it's all interconnected to his universe. There's just so much rich history that you can go uh, into the background of that version of American history. And it has like aliens and vampires and ghosts. And it makes history a whole lot more fascinating, in my opinion. And um, it's just like this quiet little town. And I think it would just be like a nice getaway place, except with all the murdering clowns and aliens. And so ha- have you. But uh, I couldn't really decide if I go for summer or spring. Uh, anyone would do. It's going to be the same weather either way. So, yeah. That's Dairy Maine Dairy was definitely one of those. Did you have any? Uh, Camp Half Blood. Mm. Because, yeah. like, yeah, you could really go at any time. You could go at any time, but also, like, I feel like you'd miss out on so much stuff if you went just for spring break. Right. Because, like, there is so much to do. Um, But I also feel like you would not want to re-enter the real world if you stayed all summer. 
Mm -hmm. because oh hey you're actually you're safe and you're having fun and yes you might you know hurt each other with swords and shit but (laughs) but like you don't have to deal with the actual monsters that are trying to kill you and then you're like wait i have to leave and so Yeah. yeah i'm kind of honestly like it might be good for like a month in summer type thing, like a month long summer camp retreat. Mm-hmm. But I, it's definitely too much stuff to do at Camp Half Blood for spring break, and then I just would never want to leave if I stayed there all summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's totally understandable. Yep. Yeah. All right. What else have you got for us? Where else would you go? At uh, any time of the year. I would love to go into the MonsterVerse where Godzilla and Kong live. You know, i just pack like a, 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 once again, pack light. But if <laughs> I could ever just see like King Kong and Godzilla just duking it out with one monster, you know, life fulfilled. I'm good. I don't need to see any more. I don't need to see anything else. That's like peak, you know. Uh, I always loved watching the Godzilla and Kong monsters and being able to like touch one of them would I would be unbelievably happy. There are just these colossal giant monsters that are just a remnant of our past. And I think they're so interesting to just like study their mannerism. So I always got jealous of Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson and Kong Skull Island when they're just like looking at Kong and the Skull Crushers and how his everyday life is. I'm like, wow, they were really lucky to just witness something so extraordinary like that. So that would definitely be one of them. Um. I want to go back in time to Camelot, but like mm-hmm. the Merlin version of Camelot. Mm-hmm. Um, one because I want to see how how like oblivious you are to realize that to not notice Merlin using magic, his eyes literally turn colors. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not no. But then also, like, there was the one episode where Merlin was stealing some of Arthur's, like, breakfast food. And he was just like, no, Arthur, like, it probably rolled off the table. So it's probably (laughs) under the table. So Arthur, like, looks under. But then there's literally this little sound as Merlin, like, uses magic to put it into a metal, like, pot type thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did you not hear that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Merlin's not moving. So, like, how, what? This makes no sense. So, I, I would just want to laugh at Arthur all day. And then him asking me what. And then I'm going, you're just a, oblivious. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think, like, I feel like I would want to go and also help Morgana be good. Like, to show her. And then we can overthrow Uther. And and then Arthur can actually, like, say, yes, magic is allowed within some limits. Like, if you're using dark magic and being bad, no, you do not get to live. But mm-hmm. if you're using it for good and, you know, to help, um, I mean, even if you're kind of selfish with it, where you're like, I don't want these people taking my food or, like, I want my plants to grow bigger, so I'm gonna use yeah. a little bit of magic. Like, that's fine. But, like, if you're literally using it to kill people, nope. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Camelot, I feel like, would be a lot of fun. I would not like not being able to shower every day. Yeah, no, that but, would suck. You'd stink so bad in Camelot. Oh, Like, it, it would be awful. So I feel like it'd be a spring break vacation more than anything yeah but yeah i feel like it would be a lot of fun to try to learn to fight from some of the knights of the round table and and like i said just make fun of arthur for being so freaking oblivious that would be fun yeah all right you got anything else for us um i will mention pirates of the caribbean just like any one of those um any one of those breaks would be good Again, it's the showering and being clean thing, but you know, a pirate's life for me. I think well, it's like fun. in the first movie when they find Mr. Gibbs and um, Jack throws the bucket of water on him to wake him up because he's sleeping with the pigs. And then Will Turner throws the bucket of water on him and he's like, I'm already awake. And Will Turner is like, Yeah, but you stink. 
mm-hmm. and Mr. Gibbs is like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and I would definitely say Pirates of the Caribbean over uh, the TV show Black Sails, because yeah. even though Black Sails is pirates, I feel like they would be a lot more murdery and stabby pirates, especially yeah, the, Car- the Caribbean pirates are a lot more fun to hang out. Yes, with. Like, even with Davy Jones because he's just a drama bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just be like, "Hey, play your organ, and I'll be happy. I'll just sit here and listen, and I'll you know applaud you when you're done because it's cool." But... Yeah, I'll just pull on an acoustic guitar and play along with him. <laughs> yeah, you know, make a little, bring a couple. Uh, recording studio things from yeah jam session with davy jones <laughs> <laughs> it would work kind of fun you just can't go on land with him to make it you have to do it on the boat yeah which is fine just yeah. don't i hope you don't get seasick <laughs> i mean you could be docked but it would still kind of be rocking a bit yeah but who's gonna let the flying dutchman dock in there <laughs> in their um uh oh i mean if he paid well rock. enough i don't think they would care yeah that's fair also he could just threaten them but yeah yeah pretty much well that's it for me okay i like i said i like was literally going through many different lists and i know i've read lots of fictitious universes can i remember any of them for this episode no (laughs) but i think to that like fictional universes can get altered in our in our world Uh, especially in the world of fan fiction um so when like fan fiction alters the canon that we have built up or that the authors have built up um because I feel like the Harry Potter world has be- definitely been altered by some fan fictions. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't always change if the fans like it. Mm-hmm. And if there aren't a crap ton of plot holes and like holes in the story. Like if you read the Narnia books, there isn't really much description on what Narnia looks like. Right. Like, you get like one or two pieces, but it's not that descriptive. Whereas, like, The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings, you're gonna get a crap ton of information about what everything looks like. But that's also the difference between authors, because Tolkien was known to stop and stare at a tree for 20 minutes, which is why mm-hmm. nobody wanted to go on walks with him. Hmm. There was. <laughs> well, and, like, whereas, like, C.S. Lewis was trying to make Narnia a euphemism for heaven and you know because aslan is god or at least jesus and Mm -hmm. all that fun analytical stuff that we won't get into um if y'all want to get into it you can you can dive deep into that rabbit hole um Mm -hmm. but yeah so we want to know from you guys what if you could live in any fictional universe first off what would it be and why but also, where would you want to go for any of your breaks? Like spring break or winter break or summer break? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So as always on Raving Geeks, we like to end with some recommendations. Um, this can be movies, books, um, music, something in our town or city that we think people should enjoy. So Carter, what are your recommendations? Uh, my recommendations for the week are to go see Evil Dead Rise. For those who really like horror movies, Evil Dead Rise is definitely perfect. Uh, I saw it over the weekend. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Do be warned, if you're very squeamish on gore and sounds, do not go see this movie. It That's basically what the movie relies on. Um, and then I'm also going to recommend for a video game, uh, Fanatics, Jedi Fall, I'm sorry, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is the sequel to Fallen Order. Uh, unfortunately, I can't play because I can't afford it uh, financially or uh, in um, my storage for my PS5 because it takes 156 gigabytes. It's a lot of storage. So to all those who are going to play Jedi Survivor, have a lot of fun. I hear it's a really great game. Uh, those are all my recommendations. 
Um, well, I'm going to recommend a book. I know, big surprise. Um, but I'm recommending Peter and the Star Catchers, which is apparently also a musical. Hmm. Um, I don't know if it's based on the same thing, but I don't know. Um, but the uh, Peter and the Star Catchers is put out by Disney Hyperon. Um, it's by Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson. Um, there are a few different books in the series. It's There are five books in the series. And they're all relatively thick books. <laughs> so they'll hold you down for a bit. Um, but they're really good books. And I absolutely love them. Um, I'm also going to recommend two um historical movies hacksaw ridge which has andrew garfield in it um that one i also give a slight um warning on if you're squeamish on stuff because he is literally saving people from he's saving men from battlefield mm -hmm. um but i'm also going to recommend midway which is the battle of midway um that one has a few big a few big name mm -hmm. um actors in it and also it has nick jonas i will not spoil what happens to nick jonas if he lives or dies isn't um, woody harrelson also in it too huh isn't woody harrelson in it too is i think he is maybe i'm thinking of a different actor oh yeah he